oscillations of a piston. A vertical cylinder of radius R contains an ideal gas and is fitted with a piston of mass M that is free to move. The piston and the walls of the cylinder are frictionless and the entire cylinder is placed in a constant temperature bath. The outside air pressure is P0. In equilibrium, the piston sits at a height H above the bottom of the cylinder. Part A. Find the absolute pressure of the gas trapped below the piston when in equilibrium. Part B. The piston is pulled up by a small distance and release. released. Find the net force acting on the piston when its base is a distance H plus Y above the bottom of the cylinder where Y is much less than H. Part C. After the piston is displaced from equilibrium and released, it oscillates up and down. Find the frequency of these small oscillations. If the, displacements, uh, if the displacement is not small, are the oscillations simple harmonic? How can you tell? So we're going to start with uh, the free body diagram of the piston in part A. Free body diagram of the piston. Uh, so the piston has a weight mg which is pointing down. There is the outside pressure uh, P0 which is force per area so P0 multiplied by the surface area pi r square is pointing down. There is the gas pressure uh, pointing up so gas pressure times pi r square is the force pointing up. So this is uh, the motion of the piston let's say is on the y-axis. So net force on the y-axis is a pressure of the gas pi r squared minus the weight of the piston minus outside pressure pi r squared. This is equal to zero. So pressure of the gas minus the outside pressure times pi r squared is mg. So this pressure difference is uh, the weight of the piston mg divided by pi r squared and this is called the gauge pressure it's the pressure with respect to the atmospheric pressure that's the gauge pressure so the pressure of the gas in that case will be the outside pressure p0 plus the weight of the piston mg divided by pi r squared the area surface area of the piston and this is the absolute pressure absolute pressure of the gas all right so that answers part a now in part b it's mentioned that uh, this process occurs at constant temperature so this is an isothermal process temperature is a constant um, so if I write the ideal gas law for this gas pressure of the gas times the volume which is pi r square h is equal to n number of moles universal gas constant r times t now if we displace the piston by an amount y the pressure of the gas will change it will become pressure of the gas pg prime multiplied with pi r square h plus y the new volume so uh, pi r squares will cancel and uh, i will obtain the new pressure of the gas pg prime to be uh, the initial pressure pg multiplied with h divided by h plus y all right now if i write the new uh, force on the y-axis 
net force on the y-axis. Now I have the new pressure of the gas Pg prime times pi r square pointing in j hat direction. There is the weight pointing in minus j hat direction and outside pressure P0 times pi r square pointing down as well. Uh, so this net force must be equal to the uh, mass of the piston times its acceleration on the y-axis. So uh, the new pressure of the gas is Pg, which was P0 plus mg over pi r squared. So we can substitute that for uh, Pg. Pg prime is P0 plus mg divided by pi r squared multiplied by pi r squared multiplied by h over h plus y so because that's, that's pg prime so i've substituted this for pg and then i have minus mg and minus p0 pi r squared is equal to mass times acceleration so if I take this into a P0 pi r square parentheses, this becomes a P0 pi r squared um, h over h plus y, h over h plus y minus 1. So that's uh, this term and uh, this term. And then I have the weight mg. So in mg parentheses, I will have h over h plus y minus 1. And that's equal to the net force on the y-axis. All right. So... Um, This is going to be, um, if I look at the, the parentheses here, h minus h, h's will cancel. Uh, so it's going to become uh, minus y over h plus y. The same thing is true here. So this will become uh, minus p0 pi r squared y minus mgy divided by h plus y. So this tells me that the net force on the y-axis is minus y divided by h plus y p0 pi r squared plus mg. All right, so that was the question basically. Part B was asking me, um, find the net force acting on the piston when its base is a distance h plus y above the bottom of the cylinder, where y is uh, much less than h. Now, in part C, I utilize this uh, approximation, y much less than h, implies that h plus y uh, can be approximated to be h, so y is negligible. Then the net force on the y-axis will become approximately uh, minus p0 uh, pi r squared plus mg divided by h times y and this is equal to mass times acceleration my double dot d square y dt square. So this is in the form of x double dot is equal to minus omega square x. That's simple harmonic motion equation of motion. So I see that for y much less than h, the equation of motion Um, that I obtain from Newton's second law is in the form of C 
simple harmonic motion. So therefore, this is simple harmonic motion in that case. So we can recognize what omega is now. So let me uh, clarify that this m can be taken downstairs here. This becomes mh, so we obtain y double dot equals minus omega square y. So we can read the uh, angular frequency omega to be p0 pi r squared plus mg divided by mh square root and that's equal to 2 pi times the frequency of the oscillations so we can see that the frequency of the oscillations will be 1 divided by 2 pi uh, p0 pi r squared plus mg divided by mh square root okay now the question is what happens if we have large displacements so if we have large displacement that is to say um, this equation of motion and y double dot is minus y over h plus y and this y is not much less than h anymore it cannot be ignored p0 pi r squared plus mg this is not in the form uh, y double dot is equal to minus omega square y so the conclusion is that in the case of large displacement, this is not going to be simple harmonic motion. Okay, to summarize, we have a gas trapped inside a cylinder. Uh, the, on top of the gas, there is a piston with mass M. Outside air pressure is P0. This is open to outside pressure. The radius of the piston is R. The equilibrium distance from the bottom of the cylinder is H and it's filled with ideal gas that cannot leak out. We want to know the absolute pressure of the gas trapped below the piston when in equilibrium. If you look at the free body diagram, you see the weight of the piston outside pressure times pi r square pointing down and pressure of the gas pi r square pointing up. Net force on the y-axis is zero and this gives us Pg equals p0 plus mg over pi r square as the absolute pressure. In part b, we displace this piston a small distance y on the y-axis and release. So that it's going to start oscillating. We will find the net force acting on the piston when it, the uh, piston is a distance h plus y from the bottom of the cylinder which y with, uh, with y much less than h it's a small displacement and it's an isothermal process so therefore pv equals nrt pressure times volume is a constant for this process n and t are constants so pressure of the gas times pi r square h is pressure of new pressure of the gas pi r square h plus y and the net force on the y-axis is the new pressure of the gas pi r square minus mg minus p0 pi r square that's the net force that's equal to mass times x acceleration this is newton's second law so I'm using Newton's second law of motion. And uh, when I substitute for Pg prime, Pg h over h plus y, and for Pg I substitute this, P0 plus mg over pi r square, I obtain an equation of motion, and the net force on the y-axis is minus y over h plus y, p0 pi r square plus mg. So when y is much less than h, this is going to become minus uh, y over h, p0 pi r squared 
plus mg. Why? Because uh, this y can be neglected with respect to h. And uh, with that, the equation of motion becomes uh, y double dot equals minus something times y, which is in the form x double dot equals minus omega square x, simple harmonic motion. And double dot implies we're taking two derivatives with respect to time. That's the acceleration. Okay, so the equation of motion is in the form of simple harmonic motion. Therefore, we can read omega square root of p0 pi r square plus mg over mh. That's 2 pi times frequency. So angular frequency divided by 2 pi gives us the frequency f. And uh, with the large displacement, this uh, form is not achieved because we have y over h plus y. Therefore, uh, it's not going to be simple harmonic motion in that case. So let me uh, clear this frequency here. So I have P0 pi r square plus mg over mh. And uh, this is my final answer for part B of the problem. All right. So, uh, in one case, when we have a small displacement uh, of y, uh, we obtain uh, simple harmonic motion oscillations. If it's uh, too uh, large, it's comparable to h, then the equation of motion is not that of the simple harmonic motion. Uh, so, we cannot do the same type of analysis.